Hello and welcome back to Dreamforce 2024. We're really digging into what's going on and what's going on in the market around us because Salesforce touches so much of the ecosystem. And today I'm really excited to have one of our partners in this event with G2 and Godard who, Abel, who's the CEO and co-founder of G2 to kind of dig into what's going on in kind of the market around us and you know it's talking about sales and you guys kind of help people in that way but why don't you kind of help people understand a little bit about what g2 is up to what you do and how you really are involved in this ecosystem yeah thanks rob great to be here with you in san francisco beautiful nice studio kickoff dreamforce week and i've been a huge fan of dreamforce i think i've been to every one just about since 2004 and what's been amazing over the last 20 years is seeing the cloud grow because I remember back then, I think it was the first one was just in a small hotel in San Francisco, you know, maybe 400 people. And I think now it's you know, over 100,000 people every year. So just incredible to see this industry grow. And I think one of the big trends we're fueling at G2 is the consumerization of B2B software buying and selling. And you and I were talking, you and I have both been in B2B forever. And frankly, I think it's been way too hard you know, for software buyers agree. in the enterprise to discover the best apps and know which apps to trust. And that's really why we started G2. You know, at the beginning, we called it Yelp for software. And we said, you know, why can you get more information, let's say, on a $100 dinner here in San Francisco than you could on a $100,000 CRM package? And so that's what we changed out, set out to change at G2 when we started. Yeah, and I, I think, again, you're building the community around, community of buyers around these different products. I know having been at multiple startups as well as large companies that have engaged with G2, because you start to see how these people are coming in and unbiased Im information is exchanged. What is really interesting, and you just kind of touched on it, is that you probably see how the behaviors are changing mm. in from a, a B2B buying perspective. How, what have you seen over the past you know, few years? Yeah, and I think we're seeing B2B buyers much more self-serve. And I think just like as consumers, especially you know, post-pandemic, I think we all got used to buying everything on Amazon, you know, buying everything online. And as consumers, we take it for granted. There's always peer reviews. And frankly, I think on Amazon, you know, a product with no reviews, we'd never buy, right? But if it's got 100 reviews, mostly positive, we buy it right away. And we can also see from pure consumers, you know, what they like about the products, what do they dislike, where are they having challenges. And that's really now what G2 enables. And we're seeing what's kind of amazing, 69% of B2B software buyers now report they're actually making a decision before they even talk to a salesperson. Yeah, that's crazy because when you start to look at that, your, your brand and your reputation gets out in front of you. How, how do you help those organizations really uh, get a view into that brand reputation? And how, what are you doing for other companies? Because, again, you're, you're servicing both sides of the fence there as True. well. True. And we are aiming to build a marketplace. You know, so our primary mission is to so serve the software buyer, give them great insights, but then we also want to connect them to software sellers. And it's also true for the buyer, right? If you're on a site like G2, we always say you're not there for fun. You're there because you're looking to buy an app, you know, or an AI tool to make your business better. And uh, so they ultimately, the buyers want to connect to the sellers, so we want to make that real easy. So we also serve over 3,500 software sellers now. There are customers, including the largest ones like Salesforce, IBM, Oracle, they're all G2 customers. And what we do help the brands do is one, ensure they have enough customer voice. Because I mentioned earlier, no one's gonna buy a product with no reviews. And the same is true in software now. If you have no reviews on G2, you're probably not selling anything because no one's gonna trust it. So one, we help the software sellers make sure they have enough reviews. We're actually doing that right here at Dreamforce. There's gonna be cute car codes at, a lot of the, at the end of a lot of the, the Salesforce keynotes. You know, just asking their trailblazers, hey, would you leave a review on G2? Because it obviously helps them build trust you know, through Trailblazer Voice, and they might get a Trailblazer hoodie in return. So one, we help vendors activate their customers to share reviews. And then two, we also give them all kinds of data on consumer sentiment. You know, what are the reviewers saying? What do they love about their products? Where can they get better? We can give them competitive insights. You know, why are some buyers maybe engaging more with competitor products? What do they like about those products? And we can also give them what we call buyer intent signals where we can tell them what products, what software solutions are companies shopping for right now on G2. 
Yeah, I, I think you hit on a really good topic because I think even myself being on both sides of the fence there, I was in IT a long time ago, it was really hard to get information about, and I was spending, you know, I had a budget of about a million dollars a month in the aspect of IT that I worked in. And mm -hmm. trying to get insight into that was, I reached out to people like myself that are analysts and things of that nature. But today, th and that's, you know, that's, olden days right mm. <laughs> so what now but today it's things move so much faster and it, it would seem that updating that information and getting that delivering them the right information and working with your customers and to build that marketplace you're seeing some of the sentiment like there hey you have you know five reviews maybe mm. you should really try to up your reviews the number of people who are on there your competitors have 147 or something like that. Is that where you see some of the conversations going with the CMOs and the, the chief revenue officers and those, those people who are concerned about the top of their pipeline and other parts of their pipeline? For sure. And so and I think everything is moving faster, as you said. And that's part of the reason we started G2 because, and I think there's a lot of great analysts, but they couldn't keep up. You know, I saw this my first company, Big Machines. Eventually, it became Oracle CPQ. But I remember it took us nine years to get an analyst report, 12 years to become the leader. And obviously, now software is moving so fast. And uh, we do think software buyers are looking for that real-time voice, real-time reviews. And so, one, we do help, you know, obviously, vendors encourage that. But then even more now, we're talking about how do you take those reviews, once you have good customer voice, how do you turn that into revenue? And I think it's also been a more challenging market, you know, for most SaaS vendors the last couple of years. And so I think everyone is looking, how do they better engage buyers, right? How do they more efficiently sell and market? And we think the G2 intent signal is one of the best ways to do it because also a lot of B2B outreach can be annoying, you know, because traditionally we all did spray and pray, you know, where we just kind of email every customer, every target customer that might be a fit, you know, but most of the time we're reaching out at the wrong time. And I remember for many years we sold CPQ software configure price quote software. We actually built Steelbrick. That's now Salesforce CPQ. That was my last company. But I think also our challenge was always, we never knew when people were in market to buy CPQ software. And now with our intent signals, you know, we can tell you, hey, which companies right now are shopping in the CPQ market? So obviously if you're a CPQ vendor, that's when you reach out to them. You know, and you can, and most people actually only buy a CPQ app, let's say every five to 10 years. And frankly, so, you know, nine out of those 10 years as a vendor, you're wasting your time when they're not in market. And so with G2, you can make sure you target them at the right time. Right, because the, the actual switching cost of a lot of those products that people are selling is pretty big. So you want to be there at the right moment when they're, hey, you know what, It's the pain is worth the actual cost to go and make that. So those intense signals. How do, how do you see organizations really leveraging the G2 platform? And how, how do they, because we, we have a number of, uh, your customers on mm -hmm. over the course of today and tomorrow, which is fantastic, and bringing that knowledge to people about how they're going to win with in, you know signals and understanding that is huge. So how, how do you look at them leveraging that as well? Yeah, and we do want all those vendors you know to leverage. We call it the G2 review to revenue flywheel, and it does start with reviews, right? Make sure they have enough customer voice, and a lot of these vendors already do, right? Once you have, let's say, 100 you know, good reviews and you have enough customer voice. But then the question is, what do you do with that to turn it into revenue? And as I mentioned, we think one of the best methods is to actually use our intent signals because, you know, we have over 2,000 categories of software on G2. And when a company is in market, you know, in your category, shopping, looking at you or looking at your competitors, you want to know because and that is also what drove me nuts as an entrepreneur. I hate missing a deal. You know, you never want to miss no, a deal. never want to miss a deal. And you know a lot of these B2B apps, as you said, they're sticky. Companies yeah. might run them for multiple years. So if you missed a deal, you might not get another chance for five or 10 years. And that's where we think, you know, using our intent to target at the right time is really important. And then the second thing we give them is one right time, but then also the right message. And you've probably also gotten a lot of outreach calls. I know I do as a CEO entrepreneur every day. And what's most effective to me is if they're like, hey, here's a pure entrepreneur of yours, a friend of yours. You know, obviously, ideally, it's like Mark Benioff at Salesforce, one of my entrepreneur <laughs> idols. You know, but if somebody pings me like, hey, Mark and Salesforce love my app, here's why, I will definitely take the call and listen. Right. And obviously, on G2, we have hundreds, if not thousands of peer reviews. So if you're doing outreach, you can always find a peer. You know, so if you're calling a CEO, find a peer CEO. If you're calling a CRO, a CMO, always lead with a peer message. And hey, here's how I'm delivering value to your peers. 
because I think almost any executive will listen to that, you know, or even what can also work great. Hey, I'm delivering a ton of value to your competitor. Like I'll always take that call because I never want to be a disadvantage, you know? So we also think we can really help sellers with that right peer message to engage, you know, engage their target buyer. And and I think one of the things that, again, you've done is you've not only created the marketplace, but you have such, uh, I would say people have the experience where they know that these are actual, you know, quality discussions that are happening there. Mm. So they're quality reviews and things. Talk to that a bit, a, a bit because I think people look at that and go, okay, great, there's a whole bunch of reviews out there, but why, why should I go here? Why should I trust that on the consumer side mm. of things? How do, you, how do you talk to people about that? Yeah, and Rob, you're right. I mean, that the reviews are trusted and authentic is really important. And we have all heard a lot of horror stories, you know, even on like Amazon. The FTC actually just issued a real ruling you know, kind of making it clear that, you know, you can't have fake reviews, like the FTC even is going to come down on you. And so we do spend a lot to make sure that our reviews are authentic and trusted. One of the things we do is we tend to validate them with a LinkedIn profile. Because if I really know it's you, Rob, you know, I can see, oh, wow, A, Rob's a real B2B leader, real B2B practitioner. And I can see your context, like what company are you working for? What role are you in? And so one, we validate the reviewer's identity. And it does have to be tied to their business identity. You know, obviously, if only, somebody only signs up with Gmail and we don't know who they are, right? We're not going to, we reject actually over 30% of reviews. And either that's because, you know, we can't verify the person's professional identity, you know, or it's just poor content, or we suspect fraud. And with AI, I mean, it's becoming more of a problem. You know, we were joking about avatars. Yeah. You know, I don't know if this is a real me or an avatar me speaking in this interview. I think it's a real me, but I think it's getting hard to tell. Right. And same thing with AI. People are generating more fake reviews at scale now. And so, frankly, we're also applying AI to screen all the reviews. And obviously, we're not 100 percent, but I think we, you know, we catch probably 99 percent of the bad content. And I'd say finally, we rely on our community, because if you're a buyer on G2 or if you're a software seller and you suspect a review is fake, you can report it right in the review. And we do have a review moderation trust team that will follow up and investigate. So we're always aiming you know, to make sure the content's trusted because otherwise it doesn't help the buyer. Yeah, because it happens both for good reviews and bad reviews in True. the same way. So I think you want to make it secure for both sides of the marketplace so that you know you can they can find each other, but there's not a lot of noise in, that, in the signal that you're delivering out to them as well. No, you're right. And actually we had some funny stories and I won't name names, but we have had some like famous CMOs Go try to review, write a review of one of their competitors, and uh, but luckily because we have their professional identity, you know we can catch that right away. So obviously <laughs> that's one of the things that's not allowed, but people still try. Yeah, no, I I, I can imagine <laughs> I can imagine that I can imagine people trying to game the system and trying to get a leg up. And I I think like you said, you know, having been at Amazon and understanding they they, you know, they're very intent on that, and you know we're here at the NYSEs studio mm. or our, our remote studio at the nyse this week and I, I think one of the things that's fun is that it helps make markets you're not just making a marketplace mm. but you're helping diff- new markets you said you had over two thousand different categories how how do you how do you see the categories growing do they grow exponentially year over year how do you how do you tune that so there's not too many categories but there's enough that cover the the different marketplaces you're trying to interact in. Yeah, and you're right, that's always a balancing act. You know, we do love to create new categories as new innovations emerge. And one of the most exciting areas on G2, no surprise, has been AI. So I think just in the last year, we have 40% more AI listings. And that's both startups, you know, launching new AI companies, new AI products, but also all the incumbents. And I think this week, you know, Salesforce is launching Agent Force all about supporting different AI agents. So also all the leading incumbent vendors like Salesforce are launching AI products. So that part of the taxonomy has really exploded. And we do have 40 new AI categories in about the last year. And obviously, you know, two years ago, nobody even knew what an LLM was. I shouldn't say nobody, but you almost had to be an AI researcher, right? Right. But then obviously post chat GPT 3.5, you know, now everyone's interested in AI and every business person wants to learn more. So we also have categories like vector databases, you know, obviously the underlying infrastructure. And so in some areas like AI, it's actually necessary to create new categories because our software industry is innovating so fast, right? So there we've added 40 new ones, but you're right. We also try not to overdo it because the big challenge becomes for the buyer. You know, you don't even know which category to shop in. You know, it's almost like a supermarket with 2000 aisles, you know, and like which aisle do you even shop in? 
Right. Yeah, I, I think that becomes that was actually where I was going with that because, like you said, the agentic stuff that you know Agent Force and Oracle last week announced that they had 51 different agents already wow. as part of fusion it's becoming very confusing in that mm. part of the market to put it mildly i mean i, I think uh this was actually pretty good we got through a, a good portion of this without saying ai okay. first so i think that's that's a that's a win for anything on the interwebs <laughs> these days but when you start to look at the whole how you're bringing it and and kind of you know to bring things back around what do you what what's your core mission What's G2's core mission that you're trying to drive that people should be sitting there going, yeah, that, that's why I want to, you know, on the consumer side, they're, they're going to want to go. And on the vendor side, they're going to want to go and check you guys out. Yeah. And I think our ultimate vision for G2 is to be the trusted place you go for software, but also really to be a trusted software marketplace. So in some ways, I want to be like a dating site, you know, be the ultimate matchmaker for software. And I guess my joke would be, you know, it's like, hey, the software buyer and seller fall in love on the first demo. Uh, and we are actually applying AI there, you know, so we've launched an AI Monty agent that advises a software buyer because, you know, our supermarket now of software with over 2000 categories or aisles could be confusing. So now we have an AI buying advisor. You, know, you could think of it. It's almost like, you know, your smartest eccentric consultant in a sentient AI box. And, uh, but Monty can advise the buyer and the buyer can now just enter the business problem they're having. You know, so it could be like, Hey, you're a CRO and, you, know, you just don't know how to handle your sales forecasting. And frankly, then, you know, G2 will ask more questions or you just sign up with LinkedIn. We can ask you your company size. Oh, wow, you're leading a large sales team at a tech company. And then we can say, hey, based on peer reviews, you know, here's five apps that might really solve this problem. And then the AI conversation can continue because, you know, it's also Monty can also be an AI SDR, if you will, you know, and answer all the FAQs the buyer's going to have about that product, including pricing, deployment time, integrations and really walk the software buyer further and further down the funnel where ultimately the software buyer can self-serve, you know, and uh, just buy the perfect app for them. And then because we're the perfect matchmaker, the perfect date, you know, just like a couple falls in love and is happily ever married, you know, that customer never turns. Yeah. And so I think if G2 really realizes it's stream, then every software buyer will just come to G2 and we'll match them with the perfect app in real time. Yeah, I mean, that that to me, and I, I think, you know, like you said, get them further and further down the funnel. So on the vendor side, their SDRs were, you know, uh, going from, you know, sales qualified leads to marketing qualified leads. And it kind of shortens that cycle for them hopefully. and hopefully helps them from an ROI, uh, assuming that they're providing the right information and things of that nature into your system. Do you do you see that organizations really are trying to use this to help them find higher ROI out of that marketplace and better equilibrium. Uh, yes, and I think the vendor can get higher ROI with faster sales cycles, you know, because if we walk the buyer much further down the funnel and they're much more qualified, then hopefully, yeah, it's just you know, kind of one SDR, maybe final qualification, one demo, and close. And obviously, everyone in sales loves that. Everyone in marketing loves that, right? Kind of inbound demand that converts faster. And so that is our ultimate goal, you know, and I think it's very synergistic. That's why I think the buyer and the seller, they do want to fall in love. Yeah. You know, they need each other because, like I said, the buyer, no one's re researching software for fun. You know, they're researching because they need, they have a business problem they want to solve better. And almost any business problem today, you're going to solve better with software, with AI than without it. You know, and so that's, that's what we see kind of G2's essential role in the world is to be that perfect matchmaker between software buyer and seller. Yeah, no, I love where the AI is really helping drive home what the use case and bring them to, the, you know, understanding the use case and connecting the dots for them to what's in your corpus of data that you have there. So true. Lo lots of fun. La last word, uh, you know, we're here, NYSE, beautiful space, Dreamforce is going on. What, what are you looking forward to this week? Well, I am looking forward to AI and learning more about Agent Force. And uh, I have heard apparently Mark Benioff, Salesforce, they're truly going all in on this. And apparently it's all Mark's going to talk about in his keynote. And so I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what is the next wave of AI agents and how can we, you know, all in sales and marketing, use them to, to drive more efficiency. Yeah, we actually have MK on, who's the CTO across all of that wow. uh, from Salesforce. And he's going to dive really deep into that as well. So I think this is you know, perfect alignment with what you're actually doing and using AI. So again, you know, kudos to that because I think that helps 
you understand what the buyer's journey is as well, which is I'm sure you're building back into your platform. So that's fantastic. Yeah, no, thank you. And for sure, Monty, our AI agent, gets smarter every day. And I think soon we'll be that perfect matchmaker and you know connect every software buyer to the perfect software seller. Well, thank you, Godard. I really appreciate you coming on board and helping us understand and you know really helping us this week as well as we kick this off here from Dreamforce. So I want to thank you. Yeah, thank you, Rob. Excited to be here with you. Yep. And thank you. And stay tuned from Dreamforce 2024. We have so much more going on over the course of the two days. Stay tuned. We'll be right back from NYSC Dreamforce 2024.